The Atheist Debates Patreon Project presents a debate review of a recent debate, Should All Gambling Be Illegal? No, it shouldn't. Thanks. Uh, this is an interesting debate for me because uh, somebody actually requested this. I don't go out looking for debates. I don't go out looking for debate opponents. Um, and I really don't care who my opponent is. I mean, I'd like somebody to, you know, be capable. I don't want to just debate anybody that comes along. That's what, you know, like the call-in shows are for. But I'm not going to be posting the debate here on the Atheist Debates Project because it's not specifically about anything tied to atheism or religion. Uh, I, just, I took it for a number of reasons. I took it because I'm interested in the subject. Uh, I have done a considerable amount of gambling, both in the skill-based things like poker and craps and you know other things like that. Uh, I've never had a gambling problem, but I've known people who have. And I generally err on the side of freedoms and liberties for people and that you need a good reason uh, to ban something, to prohibit something. That's the biggest reason I took this debate. The other one was that somebody basically said, hey, I really want to debate you on this subject and I'll pay you. And I said, okay, because uh, I care about the subject. And I really thought that maybe we'd get something where it was kind of based on religion. I think that that may have been the case to some extent, but not either intentionally or overtly. There was no real discussion about religion during the debate at all. But I'm here today to kind of go through things really quickly and make a case for why religion played a bigger part in that debate than people might have recognized. And so that's where this ties in with the Atheist Debates Project, not just my little pet, hey, I want to go play in a poker game and you want to try and take that away. Um, the, I, to prepare for this, because this is outside of my normal wheelhouse, I had to go look up some statistics. And I looked up specific information about the amount of revenue generated by gambling, uh, legal gambling, and what people suspected were the revenue from illegal gambling, uh, the number of jobs that it created, the number of peripheral jobs that it creates, both in the sense of uh, tourism. I mean, people go to Vegas, and there are plenty of people who go to Vegas who never gamble, but they're, the city is built around gambling. And if gambling didn't exist in Vegas, nobody would be going to Vegas. There wouldn't be the big shows and the casinos. The, you know, in, in some cases, it's People have a family or significant other or community, and maybe one of them wants to gamble. Maybe both of them do. But if one of them wants to and the other one doesn't, there needs to be something for the other people to do. And that's why this is an entertainment industry. But I'm not, I'm not here today to make the case for, for gambling again. I want to talk about basically why my opponent was uh, in favor of banning it, even if he didn't really realize all of it. Um, I continued researching statistics to find that, you know, like the number of gamblers who uh, have a problem and need help is about one to 3%. But none of that seemed to matter because I was basically saying, hey, in the interest of individual liberties and freedoms, we don't ban things that 97% of the people don't have a problem with just because one to 3% might. Uh, this is not, I mean, it, it, it doesn't even make sense to go down that path. You're going to find one to 3% have a, some sort of problem with something. Now, when I say problem, I'm not trying to trivialize this. My uh, opponent in that debate um, was a recovering gambling addict, and I'm really glad that he got help. Nobody wants to see, uh, you know, people harmed by, you know, their addictions and their, their issues. Uh, I was very happy to hear that he'd been getting help. The thing is, is that the help should be enough. Uh, the only reason to ban it, I would, I would say, is if there's no other way to help people who have a gambling addiction or anything like that. He had a lot of reasons for why he thought that it should be banned, and most of them were, like, the arguments were logically invalid, not just unsound, but uh, invalid, in the sense of, and they were there was nothing that was strongly formed, but he's like, oh, they, they lied. Basically, they said, hey, we're going to take the revenue from gambling, we're going to apply it to these other things, and then they didn't. But as I pointed out several times, that's not a problem with gambling. That's a problem with the people who lied about what they were going to do with the revenue of gambling. That's a problem with government, not gambling. If they lied, then hold them accountable and you vote for them. Um, but Or you vote against them, you vote for somebody else and you 
get, you know, the attorney generals for states and, and other things involved to say, did you mislead the people? Um, but you, you don't have to ban the gambling. That, that doesn't actually fix the problem of governments lying. And they're, you know, they're, another one of their reasons was that, and the biggest one that kept coming up was like, what was, what's the reason to ban this? Because if you're just going to say they lied, um, okay, fine, there's been a lot of lying. And the biggest reason that they came up with was that it's a vice and it should be banned for the same reason that hard drugs and prostitution are banned. Now, I went into this under the impression that he was going to defend the notion that all gambling should be banned, but that's not actually his position. And so once again, I walked, and it happened twice. I'm, I'm doing a review of another debate that I did in the past two weeks where there was almost a bait and switch where it's like, oh, this guy wants to defend the notion that all gambling should be banned. And then you show up at the debate and I had, I had a list of things in my opening to ask about. Is the stock market gambling? Technically, you are betting on the rise and fall of stocks. And you can, you know, if you're at a craps table, you can play the pass or the no pass line. And if you're in the stock market, you can either essentially buy it, buy low, sell high, or you can uh, short it uh, to, to sell high to begin with and then buy it back low. Um, you can do either of those. It is, it is absolutely, for all intents and purposes, gambling. It's just that, you know, there's not necessarily a house edge unless you're counting the, the stockbrokers that are taking a cut as the rake for the table. And what about other sorts of gambling? If I'm gambling on a game that I'm actually playing in versus gambling on a game I'm not actually playing in, how do I know that in the pickup poker game down the street, I'm protected at all. The, the difference is they keep going after the casinos because the casinos are the flashy place to gamble. They're also the safest place to gamble. It's where the most security is. It's where the most regulation is. It's where you absolutely know what the odds are on anything. And they will tell you and they will teach you. It's just that most people don't avail themselves of those opportunities. But his answer was, it's a vice. And he started by saying, don't you think it should be banned for the same reasons that prostitution should be banned, for example. And I replied, you probably should have asked me whether or not I thought prostitution should be banned because I don't. I think that sex work is work and I think that prostitution should be legal and regulated and safe. And in the places where that happens, uh, it is much better. Now, does that mean that there's no problems? No, not at all. There are plenty of problems with prostitution, even where it's legal. And there are plenty of problems with gambling, even where it's legal. But that's independent from whether or not those issues are sufficient to deny everyone uh, the right to live their life and use their money and spend it how they want. He made the claim that prohibition worked uh, when I pointed out that it didn't because prohibition reduced the raw amount of alcohol consumption. And in his mind, that was the point. Oh, we need to reduce access to alcohol. We need to reduce alcohol consumption. So if we ban it, that'll happen. Yes, you'll still have some illegal and it won't be safe and it'll probably kill more people, but we need to ban it to reduce access. And this is his reasoning behind wanting to ban gambling is the access. Uh, his primary concerns, some of which I share, the sort of um, gotcha uh, gambling that takes place in games with loot boxes where you have virtually no chance of winning, so you keep putting money into it and they don't always tell you what the odds are anyway and where they're potentially preying on kids and other things although to be fair um one of the, somebody in chat was like yes but kids can steal their their parents credit cards okay that's a problem with the kid uh and the parents i, I i'm in a bad position because i don't have kids and so i can't tell you um well my kids would never steal my credit card or use my credit card without permission uh, but they wouldn't. It's, it's it's just a how how on earth would they get access to my credit card? You don't leave, you know. If if this is a real risk, you wouldn't leave your credit card or your wallet laying around any more than you would leave a gun laying around. If that's if this is the risk you're talking about, because there's injury and expense and all kinds of responsibility. You as a parent are the stewards of those kids, and you're responsible for it. Now, it's still wrong that companies would try to prey on kids that way. Uh, and there are certainly things we should do, including, in my view, a lot more regulation on these things and maybe prohibiting them in certain circumstances. But that's not the same as banning all gambling. 
uh, his view was that uh, the uh, prohibition was a success because it reduced this. And his, his view for, for gambling is kind of the same because he wants to reduce access because he personally had a problem and other people had a problem. And of course, he's empathetic to the people who had a problem. And so are the rest of us. It's just that I can be empathetic to a problem and not think that the solution is to throw the baby out with the bathwater. But this whole thing of it's a vice, it's a vice, it's a vice is where we've been leading up to. Something should be banned because it's a vice. But what are vices? Where, where did we get this concept of vices? A vice is a sort of relatively minor moral failing is the normative usage. You say, oh, he's a really nice guy, but he's got one vice, and that is he drinks a little too much. Doesn't hurt anybody, but he drinks a little too much. Um, you, murder isn't a vice. You never say, hey, he's a really nice guy, but on the weekends he goes out and kills people. That's not a vice. That, that is a serious moral failing. So vices tend to be milder moral failings. And quite often they're things that aren't at all uh, illegal. They're just viewed as immoral, like lying, cheating, uh, cheating on a spouse, which I think is a huge deal. You've, 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 I have no problem with polyamory and open relationships and things like that. That's where there's an agreement. But violating your agreement uh, in a way that does harm to your relationships and another person, I think that's a big deal. Um, and I, I think that somebody risking the health and welfare of their family by gambling money they don't have or that they shouldn't be gambling, um, you should gamble with your you're having fun money. I go to play because I enjoy the games and there's a chance of me winning. And if I don't win, I, I'm, I walk out without any real issues. Um, for the longest time, I'd never walked out of a casino with less money than I walked in with. I walked out with exactly what I walked in with, but I have, you know, on occasion lost stuff. So you can't even make that claim. Um, this relatively minor moral failing that he wants to call a vice didn't just come out of nowhere. This is the problem of religious thought permeating society. Um, if you go to a dictionary and look up the definition, which will describe the various usages of the word vice, on the list there literally is sexual immorality, especially prostitution is listed. Murder isn't normally listed as a vice. Um, so we're still talking about things where there can be some disagreement. And as long as that's the case, what one person considers a vice Another person might not consider it a vice. I'm not going to consider it necessarily a virtue. But if you want to say gambling is a vice, how can that be? If I am a responsible player, I'm not talking about the people who have a problem with it, and I go in and I gamble money that I am knowingly willing to lose for fun or entertainment, to me it's not much different than going to a movie. We went and saw the premiere of Black Adam the other night, and we tend to go to the Alamo Draft House because you can get, you know, dinner and a drink and watch the movie. And so all of a sudden going to the movie cost me uh, 120 bucks for two people. And that's, we don't always do that, by the way, but that's basically the cost of entertainment. If I didn't like the movie, did I just throw all that money away? For example, we saw the Buzz Lightyear movie and it was terrible uh, for us. We, we did not like it. If you enjoyed it, you know, have fun. Uh but we spent the same money on both of those movies and we really liked the Black Adam one. We really didn't like the Lightyear one. You don't know what you're going when you get in there. You could spoil it um, and you could download it illegally. Um, but, but now your vice is theft and pirating. Um, it's the religious thinking that permeates our society that leads people to think because I uh, think that about vices in this way, because people will look at it and, and in their head, whether they're religious or not, religion equals good. Religion equals a source of morality. So anytime any religion starts making pronouncements about what should be considered a moral failing or a vice, it just becomes the truth. It becomes what people accept as the truth because they're all running around going to their various religious groups and they're all like, Yes, homosexuality is uh, immoral, and prostitution's immoral, and gambling's immoral, and drinking's immoral, and smoking's immoral, and this is immoral, and that's immoral. And they, it's, it just becomes like a, a way for all of them get to get together and congratulate themselves on what they perceive to be moral superiority when there's no demonstration of any such moral super, superiority. Um, lying in a way that violates an agreement and results in hurting people, I would say, is morally wrong. 
gambling is only morally wrong when done wrong or to excess. Same thing with drinking. Um, I have a bunch of alcohol on a shelf downstairs, um, and some of it is years and years old because I don't really drink very much. If there's a party here, we can mix some stuff up. If I'm, uh, I, I would imagine in the last couple of, I, I, I can't remember the last time I mixed a drink here at home. Um, I had I had some beer when a friend came over to visit um, a couple of months ago uh, and enjoyed it. But does that mean it's a vice? Does that mean it's a moral think- failing? And yet drinking to excess where you are causing harm to yourself and the people who love you and the people around you, that could certainly be considered a moral failing. But because some people drink to excess, does that mean that we ban something for everyone? Well, my opponent seemed to think that, that was the best course of action because he repeatedly pointed out regulations don't work, reg- regulations don't work, regulations don't work. Yes, they do. Uh, and by the way, banning them all is also a regulation. It is a limit of gambling to zero. And so if you don't think regulations will work, why are you advocating for the strongest regulations? It didn't make sense to me. I took the debate thinking that it might get somewhere near religion, but still a a topic that I cared about a little bit. Sorry if you don't. I just really found this whole thing interesting that somebody came in without ever mentioning religion and still spewed some of the same um, religious moralizing that we hear from individuals who are pointing to their religion as a source of morality. I intentionally never asked about the religion. I didn't want to make it about religion. And yet, when you start hearing about vices and how X is bad and should be banned, and this is like X, therefore it should also be banned, you're in now in a cascade of logical fallacies um, that is the virtual definition of a slippery slope argument, that if we don't ban it, that will lead to the decay of society. And it's, go watch Pleasantville. I. Maybe, maybe people can learn, learn a lesson from movies or songs or something like that. But on that note, I got more videos to do. You got more videos to watch. I got more debates coming up. Please stay tuned. Talk to you later.